Welcome to another episode of Jim's Lama Garden. So I'm just at the bottom of the plot and as you can see I've had uh, some uh, wood chippings delivered. Now these are obviously um, Leylandy conifers that have been chopped up and um, they've been very kindly dropped off for me. And, uh, but what I want to do is these are, these are going to break down into uh, basically carbon obviously when it's all um, you know, sort of broken all down. Now that's going to be a combination of two things, it's going to be um, fungal and also bacterial breakdown. Now for the bacterial breakdown that's already begun because if I put my hand actually in there, um, you know, you can actually feel that it's um, it's quite warm in there. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off there. But to, to help that on its way, what it needs is nitrogen to feed the bacteria. So what I've got here is a bin bag full of um, coffee ground. Um, one of my favourite things to put on the garden, as you know. Uh, so what I'm going to do is is sprinkle a load of this coffee all over the uh, the wood chip on the top. Now when it rains, that's going to wash it through into the uh, into the um, wood chip below, and then that'll help it turn break down. Now what they do say is, what if you're rotting um, if you're rotting down wood chip, it should take somewhere in the region of nine months before you can put it on the ground. But I'm going to try and accelerate that because what I want to do is, come the spring, I want to be able to put this all over the garden and sort of dig it in. <coughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is put all the coffee on now, and hopefully. Um, that will have rotted down sufficiently to uh, sprinkle around the garden next year. So uh, if you don't if you don't let it rot down, what it can do is it can take all the nitrogen out of the ground. So that's the one thing that you need to be careful of. But um, as I say, if I put plenty of nitrogen on it now, what it should do is um, you know sort of break it all down as fast as possible. And you can see the uh, the level of the obviously that's sitting at the moment at about sort of three and a half foot high. You will see the level of it dropping as the uh, as it, as it breaks down, but uh, what I'm going to do is put all this coffee on now and then we'll see how we get on, um, how much it's rotted down by the spring. So, there you go, I've uh, covered it as best I can. Um, obviously the top, it won't stay on the side, but uh, I've gone all around and I've put, uh, probably volume-wise, about two buckets of um, coffee all over. Now what that'll do is when it rains, which no doubt it will the next day, so that will wash down into the uh, into the uh, the wood, and I'd imagine that will um, you know dry. Sorry, that that will sort of you know help the uh, the rotting because um, at the moment it's a little bit dry under here because of the heat that it's generating. So uh, what we need is a better a better moisture and plenty of nitrogen, and the uh, the breakdown of the uh, the wood fibres will happen that much quicker. So um, what you could do is if you're not going to be getting a lot of rain where you are is actually um, get the hose pipe on it and uh, give it some water because obviously the the thing you need for it to rot down is basically nitrogen and moisture for the uh, for the uh, the bacteria to do its job but uh, so that's what the uh, that's what the wood chip looks like now okay so one little job that you can do between the uh, the the, uh, the the rain if you like is um, cut back now. This is the this is the um, oregano or the oregano, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And obviously, all of these seed heads now we can take these off. And what I suggest you do is cut it down to around um, well where the where the new growth is at the bottom. So cut off all of this all of this dead stuff like that. And this will this will obviously tidy up the plant um, for next year. But it will also get rid of all of the all of the dead now obviously as the the winds pick up and, and sort of snow and stuff like that that could potentially um, you know sort of bear a bit of weight onto these sort of larger branches obviously if you're saving the seed these are the these are the seed pods at the top here which you can save for next year but obviously as I've got a few 
quite quite established plants. I don't really need to uh, to worry about that. Um, and just cut them all down to um, you know where where basically where the green starts are. That's and that's where it'll start to grow again for next year. Um, and as as time goes on and the plant gets established, what it will do, um, it'll it'll become a little bit more bushy. This is obviously um, growing towards the sun. It's growing over the uh, over the bricks here, which is a which is nice and really because it hides the bricks. But uh, now just behind this, I don't know if you can see, but this is the this is the mint here. Um, and very similar way, uh, you're probably going to need a second pair of secateurs for this because these uh, these are a little bit more um, robust, as it were. But basically, what you need to do is cut it off at the ground level. Um, about an inch or so above the ground. Um, I don't typically worry about um, sort of growing growing tips. Obviously, what you what you try to do is, um, if you're doing it, um, you know, if you're trimming a normal shrub, what you do is um, cut it off. Um, so you've got a growing tip that's coming out there. But uh, with mint, I just typically just cut it off right at ground level, or an inch or so above, um, so that when we have the winds and um, you know the plant or the, the uh, what's left in the ground doesn't get damaged. That's basically what you're trying to do. So um, and remove all of the dead material. Now this is gonna this is gonna go on the compost. You can also burn this um, if you want to sort of get rid of it a little bit quicker. But this will compost down. Um, it'll it'll take a year or so to do so. So put this in your long long term compost but uh, that's that's tidied that up quite a bit that's a little job you can be doing in the next few weeks okay so there's the finished board as you can see the uh, the oregano has been cut back uh, the mint has been cut back I've left the uh, the bar, uh, the um, the time and stuff as it is for now because the wind's not going to damage that too much um, the other oregano plant is there uh, the other thing I didn't mention is bombs now um, I've got mint balm in here and also over here. Uh, this is a bit of mint balm here. And you treat that exactly the same as you would mint. So basically just cut that down to an inch or so. Well, there's about three inches there off the ground. And then obviously the new growth will grow from the bottom. All of your hollyhocks, cut them right the way down obviously to let the uh, the new growth come for next year. As you can see these are already starting to, um, to grow. There's a bit of lemon balm around the bottom there as well. Um, all of the comfrey has been sort of chopped back and all that's been put on the compost. So uh, all of the mint, this is, this is household mint here, um, cat mint here, that's all been cut down. There's some lemon balm, as I say, that's been cut back. Um, so all of, that's, uh, all of that's now nice and tidy. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put a mulch of um, some, uh, some well-rotted manure on that um, in the next few months uh, before it all starts to grow again, um, just, to, just to give that a bit of food. And then obviously this side as well, um, I'll be giving that a bit. There's a few weeds here and there which can be pulled out at a later date, that's not really a problem. Um, but uh, that's what the the, uh, the herb um, borders look like at the minute. Just another couple of points, um, the uh, the rosemary lives exactly as it is. Um, I was actually discussing this with Tina a couple of weeks ago. What you can do is trim your rosemary bushes back, uh, but I tend to leave mine because as you can see this is, this is where I'm pulling it off um, to use in the, uh, the, the garden. So I'll give it a little bit of shaping um, possibly in the spring but for now I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, rosemary you might as well just leave that to grow um, as, I've as I've done with this one as you can see. So, uh, you know that'll do quite nice. It's quite a strong plant so you don't need to worry about the wind damaging it too much at all to be honest with you and the, the weight of the snow and stuff. So uh, that's the that's the borders. Next quick point just want to let you know um, the the chickens I'm mucking them out is I'm just halfway through mucking the chickens out now. Um, I'm getting about two or three of the sort of barrelfuls of this out every um, sort of three or four weeks, um, and obviously this is this is fantastic stuff for the um, allotment. So all I'm doing is just basically just piling that up on the uh, the plot, and that'll all be spread around in the spring, for just before I rotivate, and I'll rotivate all of that into the ground. Um, Chicken muck is a little bit acidic, but uh, to be honest with you, if you leave it over winter on the plot, that'll be perfectly okay to dig in. And I'll predominantly dig that in where I'm going to put the potatoes, to be honest with you, um, because the the, um, the straw rots down quite quickly. The straw's a really good source of carbon, and you've got, obviously, in, in, in the chicken muck 
you know that's in there as well obviously that's that, that's rich in a whole variety of things for uh, the garden so uh, that's what I'm doing with that at the moment but uh, that's uh, that's what to do with the chicken muck at the moment <laughs> So if you do find it's raining outside, another job that you can be getting on with most certainly is uh, getting rid of all of the old plants that you grow. So if you haven't got rid of your tomatoes already, um, you know, obviously get rid of those. But um, most certainly cucumber plants now, you know, they're not uh, they're not going to do you any good anymore. So what I'll suggest you do is um, sort of if you haven't already, I've normally done it by now to be honest with you, but um, just, just cut down all the vines. Um, not like that. Um, I I normally put these uh, bits straight in the bin. I don't typically compost because what you can get is a reasonable amount of fungus on the, on the plant. So what I always what I always use as a kind of rule of thumb, as it were, um, is um, anything that you grow in the greenhouse. Um, don't compost it. That's that's always the rule I always use. So any any cucumbers or uh, most certainly the tomato plants, um, don't don't compost them. Always put them into the ground. Uh, sorry, always put them into the bin um, because they uh, a a they don't compost down very well because they can sort of bring disease uh, back into the garden. But um, most certainly with cucumber plants, they're quite fibrous, and uh, they don't, um, you know, they don't compost down that well anyway. But uh, as you can see, you know, you sort of very quickly, you can sort of rattle through, and it's a nice little job to do when it's uh, when it's raining. Um, now, what I will be doing in the next few weeks is um, is just washing the washing the greenhouse down as soon as you've got the plants out of the way like this. Um, if there's any danger of frost, I tend to. Uh, I tend to wait till we're going to have at least a, it doesn't matter if it's wet, but uh, if, it's a, if it's a reasonable sort of warm, warm, warm period, um, is just wash the outside of the glass. Um, what I tend to do is use a bit of soap, a bit of washing up liquid, and get the hose pipe, make sure that it's, it's nice and uh, wet on the outside, and just get a, a broom, and just go up and down as I've, as I've showed you in the past. Wash all the glass off, because washing the glass, believe it or not, uh, the algae that forms on the glass does stop quite a reasonable percentage of the um, of the light getting into the greenhouse. And when you're growing things like tomatoes and stuff like that, as much light as possible in the greenhouse is always the best way forward. Um, because you, you know you want those to you know you want the sunlight to to ripen the fruit off. Particularly if you live in you know um, you know like a country like the UK where we don't get that much sunlight anyway. Um, you know you want to have the, the maximum amount of sunlight in the greenhouse. So just the, you know, I don't know if you can see the glass from uh, from where you are, but there's a there's a little bit of algae um, on there, and uh, but just that little amount of um, just that small amount of algae will make a massive difference to the sheer amount of light that you can get through um, from the outside. So whilst whilst you've got no plants around the greenhouse at this time of year, and uh, whilst you've got nothing most certainly in the greenhouse as well. Um, just to get the algae off the glass will make a massive difference to your crops next year. So, just spend, you know, sort of, you know, even if you haven't got a hose pipe, you've just just a bucket of water with um, a, a bit of soap. What you can do is use a bit of Jay's fluid on the inside. Uh, it doesn't tend to smell that nice, but uh, you know, just just to just to wash off, as, you know, as much as you can do. Particularly uh, with the glass. Obviously, be careful. It's glass, so if you're doing it from the inside, um, you know, you know, sort of make sure you don't break the glass because it could potentially fall on you. Uh, but well, certainly the roof, the apex of the greenhouse is the most important part. But uh, just by just by doing that every year, uh, you know, you, you know, you can make a massive difference. If you leave it for a few years and not do it, what you, what you do tend to find is it builds up on the glass, and it's a lot harder to get off. Then, if you do it every year, um, it's it, it's quite easy to get off. It's uh, you know a greenhouse this size, which is ten by eight. It literally takes you about half an hour just to go around with the hose pipe, quickly wet everything, bit of soap and water with a with a brush, a nice stiff brush, go up and down the roof. And then you know, sort of wash it back off with the uh, with the hose pipe. Make sure that the gutters are nice and clear. And then on the inside, what I do is, whilst there's nothing in here, obviously I've got nothing drying anymore. There's a, there's a few gourds down the bottom there, a few seeds. I'll obviously take them out of the way. But um, on the inside, what I do is um, with a uh, with with the same brush, with um, a, 
a bit of soap, just go up all, all the way over the glass. Obviously, be careful of your, any grapevines or anything like that you've got in here. And then just with the hose pipe at the door, just sort of quickly go around to that and wash it all down to make the glass nice and clean. If you've had, if you've had um, blight or anything like that in the greenhouse, most certainly do it. Um, and what I would, what I would suggest you do is with a, a cloth and some, um, you, you know, a, a bit of jace fluid or even a bit of bleach. Wipe all of the glass down afterwards, and uh, make sure that you've killed all of the, you know, you know, potential, most well, certainly the gaps in that where all the spores can, uh, can, can sort of hide away. But um, you know, you, you know, get your greenhouse as as clinically clean as you possibly can do, and then uh, you know, moving forward into next season, uh, you know, it'll prepare you to have a nice, healthy greenhouse, and uh, you know, you won't have any problems for next year. So that's a little job you can be doing in the next few weeks. <laughs> So, I hope this episode has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions that you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I will see you on the next episode of Jim's Along the Garden.